If you're a product of the 1940s, get ready for a nostalgic ride. Fasten your seatbelts as we dive into the timeless allure and sophistication of the automobiles crafted during your birth year. Prepare for an unparalleled journey through the captivating pages of automotive history. 1940, the Graham Spirit of Motion, the Graham Shark Nose models were in their final year by 1940 but still looked radical. The forward can of the car's front end made them appear fast and aggressive, even while parked. The plain vanilla models had 90 horsepower but supercharged six-cylinder cars offered 120 horsepower. The car's original and avant-garde design didn't resonate with mainstream buyers. So it was replaced for a more traditional, boring style. Today, these are rare cars even at the biggest collector car shows. 1941, the Buick Century, though the captivating Century already had a reputation as a stylish performance car, the Buick gained more power for 1941. The Fireball straight 8-cylinder engine made 165 horsepower thanks to compound carburation, dual carbs, and that meant this Buick was one of America's most powerful cars. It could top out at over 100 miles per hour and cruise comfortably at 80 miles per hour, which was certainly impressive for the time. The Century helped establish Buick as a performance brand for GM. 1942, the Lincoln Continental, the 1942 model was the Continental's last year before automakers halted production to supply parts and vehicles for World War II. But this Lincoln was one of the few that year that saw some minor design revisions, including redesigned front end sheet metal. Under the hood, Lincoln's big 292 cubic inch, 130 horsepower V12 remained. It's estimated that just 136 of these beautiful Continentals were built. 1943, the Willys MB. Since the world was at war, global new vehicle production for civilians was paused. And certainly, the most significant new vehicle to come out of this period was built for the US military, the Willys MB. Of course, the Jeep was central to the success of the Allied war effort. But post-war, 1945 Willys production shifted to the civilian CJ2 Alpha which became popular with farmers and ranchers. The first CJ models retailed for just over $1,000 and of course went on to become the granddaddy of all 4x4s and the genesis for the Jeep brand we know today. 1944, the White Motors M16 MGMC Half-Track. Before the United States marched into World War II, the Scout car was the go-to light armored battlefield workhorse. Built by White Motors, the M2 and M3 were the furthest development of wheeled Scout car before the attack on Pearl Harbor. Yet all wheeled vehicles had their shortcomings on a muddy, shell-cratered battlefield. The US Army took an M2 Alpha 1 Scout car and added tracks to the rear, creating the M2 half-track. Autocar got the first contract to build the M2, but with more production capacity needed, White and Diamond T were brought in. 1945, the Dodge WC. The 1945 Dodge WC, weapon carrier, was a series of military trucks produced during World War II. The 1944 model featured a robust design with a sturdy frame and reliable performance. It was available in different variants, including cargo trucks, ambulances, and weapons carriers. The 1945 Dodge WC typically had a six-cylinder engine, providing sufficient power for military tasks. Its design focused on durability and off-road capabilities, making it suitable for diverse terrains. The cargo variants had an open bed for transporting supplies and equipment, while the weapons carriers were equipped to transport firearms and ammunition. The 1945 Dodge WC remains a symbol of the military's reliance on versatile and rugged transportation during World War II. 1946, Chrysler Town and Country Convertible. Before the nameplate was synonymous with 1980s minivans, Town and Country meant Woody. The Town and Country was a steel roof station wagon prior to World War II with real wood siding and a third row of seats. But when the town and country returned for 46, it was launched as a stylish convertible using white ash wood and mahogany. In 1947, some of that wood trim was replaced with a full material. The last woodies of this era hit the road in 1950. 1947, Chevrolet Fleetmaster. 
the Chevrolet Fleetmaster didn't change for the 1947 model year and this Mains Team sedan carried styling that really echoed the late 1930s. But the country just didn't care that it looked old. Car buyers were eager for new cars and surprisingly, this Chevy was America's best-selling car for 1947. General Motors moved a whopping 684,145 of them. 1948, Tucker 48. The revolutionary Tucker torpedo was short-lived, just one year and only 51 cars produced, but it was packed with promise and innovation. The car had an aero body shell, a rear-mounted flat six-cylinder engine, and a four-wheel independent suspension. The Tucker was brimming with safety tech too, a third headlight pivoted when you turned, disc brakes were standard and almost unheard of at that time, a padded dash as well as a pop-out windshield were there to protect occupants' heads during a collision. Today these rare Tuckers can sell for upwards of $3 million. 1949, Mercury 8. Few cars were embraced more strongly into custom car culture than the 1949 Merc. The streamlined sedan was a radical break from the previous year's model, which still had pronounced fenders and a large, peaked hood. The smooth new Merc had an upsized flathead V8 and that helped it triple the sales of the old model. This Merc is still popular for the hot rodders that modify them today. Thanks for joining us as we rediscover the vintage charm and elegance of the cars from the 1940s that were rolling off the assembly lines during your birth year. If you enjoyed this ride through automotive history, hit that like button, subscribe for more classic car content, and join us next time for another adventure on wheels.